Great. And now I'll talk a little bit about um, assessing women's empowerment in and through agricultural research for development, methods, challenges, and opportunities. Um, so the main objective of this chapter was to address how measuring or assessing women's empowerment can help achieve gender equality and to review some of the, the CGIR work that's been done around the assessment of women's empowerment. So in the chapter we briefly start by um, looking at the historical and political context to the women's empowerment agenda and then we spend quite a bit of time going through how women's empowerment is conceptualized. Um, and looking at the various ways that um, it, it's been defined in the literature. And so, and it's a complex concept, and Rhiannon put a definition up at the beginning, and we use that as a starting point, but also recognize that there are other frameworks and definitions being used. And, and some of the examples are, uh, the Kabir's definition is empowerment as a process of gaining the ability to make strategic life choices. Um, others take it as an outcome. How many women have we empowered? Um, and so how, and that, the way you perceive it affects how you measure it. So thinking about these issues, also all the different dimensions around resources, agencies, achievements, as well as the different levels. So I think Rhiannon talked about these things in her overall framework at the beginning. So I won't go into too much de detail there. Um, so this is a complex concept, um, and it can be quite difficult to measure. So, and often we see that this concept is depoliticized, it's simplified, it's a little bit watered down, be perhaps because it is difficult to measure. Uh, for example, I often hear women's empowerment being talked about in terms of increasing women's employment or income. And as we look through the definitions, we, we can see that it's much more complex than that. And so how can we get measurements that kind of take into account this um, complexity? Um, and so in this chapter that we argue that measuring women's empowerment offers different pathways for supporting women's empowerment, and that different tools and approaches contribute to these different pathways. And, and that bringing together the tools can provide more holistic assessments. So we reviewed and analyzed um, different CGIR approaches as well as some partner organizations as well and found that a lot of these tools cluster around um, the Women's Empowerment and Agricultural Index or some variation of those as well as some more um, qualitative tools in the, in the Genovate project. And then there are also attempts to bring these tools together in, in, in mixed methods. And so when we analyzed this, we actually looked at several different factors and in this graph, we present two of those factors. Um, we have the dimensions here on this axis. So we have whether it just focused on resources or agency, whether it accounted for both resources and agencies, or if it also got towards achievements on this side. And then we also looked at um, the level. So whether it was just looking at um, personal level empowerment or maybe some relational issues between spouses often, whether it looked at both of these, personal and relational, or if it also got at this kind of environmental or societal level idea around empowerment. And so we tried to classify these tools. It wasn't always an easy process, but we've tried to classify them based on these two dimensions. In the paper, we also talk about some other factors, but for the graphic, we, we just look at these two dimensions. And we see that um, a lot of, or there are some measures that really just look at kind of relational aspects about decision making, so the agency issue here, and they're looking at how decisions are made within the household. If we move up to quadrant two, then we get some, some tools that are looking more, um, getting more at the environmental or societal level, especially looking around um, gender attitudes in the community. Um, and then we see quite a bit of, of the tools falling in this quadrant four, and a lot of these are around the WEA or variations of the WEA and some qualitative measures here as well. And they're looking at both personal and relational aspects and starting to get towards more of the environmental or societal level. Um, and they're also primarily around resources and agency, and some of them are moving towards also getting at achievements. And so that's kind of some of the analysis we did in the chapter. Please read it to get some more details. I can't, don't have time to go into a lot of details. And looking forward, we really, I'm going to leave you with three of these five points. Um, the first one is, is thinking about this tension between 
being able to measure and compare um, the measures of empowerment over time and space, as well as capturing kind of large scale um, representative data versus getting at the contextual nature of empowerment. Um, also thinking about the idea of, of whether empowerment, we, we typically tend to measure it in agriculture, but there might be other aspects of women's lives that we need to include. And then finally, I'll leave you with the idea that besides knowing where women are making decisions, when they choose not to choose. And I'll stop there. Thank you.